Welcome to a drawer video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show an extended example of called Health and Mana that works with the float box macro within Harlow 3.3. So based on our knowledge of the float box macro, we can position things within the page within a web page. So instead of being things within the browser, or that is within the passage, we can position things within the web browser within the page. This allows us to put things outside of the normal passage area. However, I'm setting up a bunch of different things, a bunch of different macro usages within this to show where this can be particularly useful if we want to show statistics, things like health and mana, hence the name of this example, to show what they look like to players or users as they play through an experience. So let's go ahead and I'm going to move through all these passages and then I'll play it for you. So the first thing I'm doing here is setting up health and mana. That will be the two main things we will track. Um, notice I'm using open and, close, open and closing curly brackets. Um, this is collapsing white space. As a review, if we have multiple macros, each usage will take up a single line within a passage. However, we can collapse all of that extra space, which we call white space, by using open and closing curly brackets around them, and it will collapse everything that's within that instead of it taking up extra space. You may see, depending on what resolution you're using, some little tiny dots uh, between the line here to where this macro starts. Um, that is a tab. I have tabbed in all of these just so they're a little easier to read. Keep in mind when it collapses white space, any extra spaces, so pressing spacebar or tabbing, all of this will be collapsed. Totally up to you how you want to position your own code. I find this slightly easier for me to read. So we're setting up health and mana, and then we're going to adventure. So let's jump over here to adventure, which is doing multiple different things. So it's first using the display macro to include the contents of one passage in another. So as a review of the display macro, sometimes we find ourselves in situations where we have lots of complicated code within Harlow or potentially other story formats we're using. In Harlow, we use the display macro to display the content of another passage in the current passage. How this applies to code is that sometimes we got lots of complicated code, but we can break it into small parts and then display it or include it as needed. So in this case, I have a passage called check health and mana that's acting as its own sort of set of code, which we'll go look at here in just a moment. And then I'm moving down here to display encounter, which is doing its own set of code. And then I'm using the float box macro right here. And then notice again, when we use float box, we use X marks the spot for horizontal, Y marks the spot for vertical. So in this case, I want it all the way over here on the far right. And then I want it up here in the top part of it. So keep in mind y and, or x and y that is start from the top left. So this is moved all the way over to the right and this is all the way at the top. So the top right is what we'll see it. And then inside here I'm doing an additional use of the display macro to include the contents of another passage inside the box defined by the float back the float box that is hook so i'm including something from another passage as right here the part of the user interface and then i'm using the link macro to create a link that then using the go to macro to go back to adventure which is me just being a little bit of extra here i could have also just used a link uh, to connect this back to itself so let's go look at check health and mana. So keep in mind, I'm using the display macro to break up complicated code into sets of code that are a little more thematically um, appropriate for each section. So reusing right here, collapsing white space. This just says, hey, if mana ever drops below zero, set it back to zero, just so we don't have negative. And if health ever drops to zero, go to lose immediately loses over here, you faint and are then transported back to the local end, which is basically the one ending of this experience. So let's go over here to user interface. We see health and mana. Okay, let's come down here to encounter. Encounter's doing a few different things. Again, using that collapsing white space right here. So we don't care about any of the stuff that's within it. It's gonna be collapsed back down, which allows us to space things out, make it a little easier to read if we wanna do it that way. Again, I have tabbed these in, but you could also use spaces or whatever you want. Again, it will be collapsed, so space doesn't really matter as much. And I'm using the random macro to get a number between one and 20, as if you were going to roll a 20-sided dice. And then I'm checking to say, hey, if the temporary variable, notice the use of the underscore for temporary, if the temporary variable roll is less than or equal to 10, so about a 50% chance right here, or a 50% chance, 
then go ahead and adjust health by 20. So set health to health, whatever the current value is, subtract 20 from it. Do the same right here, the mana, and then put the tax you encounter an enemy and lose health and mana. So keep in mind the little bit of tricky thing when we use content or we use text within the collapsing white space, so the open and closing curly brackets, that we generally need to align it all the way over here because it will then be collapsed back together. So we want this to kind of be on a lines by itself and when this is collapsed, it will then be together. And then alternatively, the else mac right down, down here says you see nothing of note. So if it's 10 or less than 10 right here, we will these things will trigger. If it isn't, we will see nothing of note. So let's come back to adventure. So what is happening every time we come to this passage is it's checking to say, hey, if health is less than or equal to zero, that, which is to say we've dropped below whatever the health threshold we set, we will immediately go to the lose passage. If that's not the case, we will keep on and move to the next thing. The next thing in sequence is the encounter, and this will roll or do the equivalent of rolling a 20-sided die. We'll say pick a number between 1 and 20, and if it's, if it's 10 or less than 10, then go ahead and subtract 20 from health and 20 from mana, and then show us a message. If it's not, then we will see nothing of note. Then we're updating right here from the user interface passage, right over here, health and mana. Now the reason why this is last is because we want to do all of the math and then update whatever information we're showing to the player or user. So keep that in mind. Do all your calculations and then update those values to then show people. Because otherwise, if we flip this and float box was first, we would show them information, and then change that information, they wouldn't see those changes. So do all the changes, then update. Finally, we provide a link that just sends us right back here. We could have also done a link, but I'm literally using the link macro and the go-to macro one more time. So let's see this in action. So we start the adventure with perfect health and a pull of mana. Adventure. Notice we have a user interface over here. Again, the use of the float box macro. So the box macro within Harlow allows us to define a subsection. Float box extends that. We're defining a subsection somewhere on the page, extending out of the part that we normally have a displaying of passages. So we have this way over here. Now, a little bit of note here about why I chose this part of the screen. So I chose this way over here because if you put it over here, keep in mind a box defines a section, a subsection of a passage. If we do a float box in the upper left-hand corner and we're not careful, we can literally hide this undo thing. It will take up all of this and depending on how big you make it, may also take up sections of this passage right here. So I stuck it far over here in the corner by itself. So that is a little bit of caveat we need to be careful of. We've got lots of things going on when we're working with the float box macro. But otherwise, we have health and mana, and we see nothing of note. So again, 50% chance each time. So let's adventure. Nothing of note. Ah, uh, we lost some health, lost some mana. Let's adventure again. Ah, uh, we lost down to 60. Okay, nothing happened. 40, 40, 40, 20, 0. Ah, uh, and I fainted, finally. So, lots of different things going on in this example, but... The real core of it is evolving around the float box macro. Again, float box allows us to float a box, a subsection of a passage, to different parts of the page outside of the normal part that we would define for a passage. If we're using its sister, the box, we're defining things horizontally. If we're using float box, we are floating a subsection, floating a box to other parts of the page. In situations like this, that is incredibly useful. We can kind of stick a user interface or what might be called a heads-up display or a HUD of information that a player or user might want to see across multiple passages. We can kind of define it in one place and use things like Floatbox combined with the display macro to display information in a particular section of the screen. And then as they're moving through passages, keep having that updated information. Again, as I did down here in Adventure, do all the calculations, then update the display. In fact, if I wanted to, I could have moved all of these things into a second passage and then dis displayed that, included that content in this passage. So lots of different things going on, all previous macros I have covered in other videos, using the set macro to change the value of variables, 
the if macros are checked to various conditions, less than, greater than, things like that. And then using the display macro to include the contents of one passage in another and combining it now all together with the float box macro to float a section or a subsection of a page, I should say, within a different, <laughs> a subsection of a passage in a different part of a page, I should, I should say, and arranging that the way we want it. So float box can be incredibly powerful for things like user interfaces, heads up displays, sometimes called HUDs, and various other encounters. We want to display that extra information just outside of the normal passage area that will be updated for things like adventures and a potential fantasy setting or sci-fi setting or other things. Really, really useful for those use cases. Thanks for watching this video on Harlow 3.3.